Hello everybody and welcome. Thanks for watching. Today's topic, the lowdown on my two nights of seeing Rolling Stones Hackney Diamonds Tour 2024 at SoFi Stadium in beautiful Los Angeles. And if I don't say much so myself, also at the beautiful SoFi Stadium because she is a fine ship to see a show in. Stones are here two nights, Wednesday and last night, Saturday. And I'll give you big picture first. They delivered. I wasn't 100% sure what to expect coming into this. Now, you know, I'm a big Rolling Stones fan. I mean, look around me. The signs abound. <laughs> but um, so and and I go, I don't go way back as far as seeing tours like some people, you know, 100 shows and so on, practically like deadheads, right? Those are the people down there in the pit, which I got the inside story on my Saturday night visit about that got some insight about being in the pit uh because i never have the money for those kind of tickets you know but um at any rate yeah they i wasn't sure what to expect of this tour as you know i'm a rolling stones fan deep rolling stones fan and right i was saying that i go back uh, i don't know how many tours have seen them somewhere around a uh, voodoo lounge uh somewhere around there uh, the tour whatever came after steel wheels because i missed steel wheels that was like the cutoff but after that i pretty much haven't missed a tour now this is the first time i went to two nights and i'm very glad to say they switched up the set list well enough of which speaking of set lists great I got, we got, LA got uh, five, uh, four to five Hackney Diamond songs a night. Uh, and uh, that was great. Got angry twice. Um, Keith gave us his version on Wednesday night of uh, his Hackney Diamonds cut, Tell Me Straight. Beautiful. Just beautiful to hear him play. Uh, this tour they're all a little bit older and so the tour has been kind of the actual uh play time on the stage has been restructured a bit and so i was uh, uh watching that and observing that and getting you know getting my thoughts about that and so because you know they yeah they're a bit older now i keep coming back to the opening point which is i wasn't sure what to expect I saw when they started this tour, I saw a couple of videos on YouTube. You know, people post it right away. So I went to see it. And I, I'll be honest with you. I was a little after seeing it because I thought that the boys maybe had lost just a step and a half now. And it's going to be, okay, octogenarian time for concert, which would have been realistic to expect, right? Um so i saw those couple of early shows where did they open i think boston um and i yeah i was like oh energy level 70 you know uh matches their age <laughs> even then they needed to be at 80 for energy level and they didn't match it i in my opinion so as the tour came closer to la i started getting my mind wrapped around the idea that that's what i'm gonna see octogenarian city I'm going to accept it. I seen the boys when they had plenty of energy. I saw them when they were playing their asses off. I saw Mick when he was dancing his ass off and running up and down runways. And I'm going to just leave it to this last tour as maybe it's going to be my last tour to see them. Anybody to see them. Who knows, right? So uh, I just started accepting that. And I said, if they're a little bit slower, I'm going to appreciate what's before me. Well, let me tell you. Mick Jagger and the boys just kicked the lid off that bullshit idea <laughs> because they put on the show. Mick doesn't dance as vigorously as much, but he moved 
He skipped at times. He gave us a little jog at times. And um, he belted out the tunes all night and played harp. All right. So and a little bit slower. What did I notice? I was talking about I was trying to notice where they compensated things where he wasn't vigorously dancing, not so much footwork as in the past. Footwork is there. Don't get me wrong, because it is there. He shuffles um, and jaggers, you know, but just not as often and not for the full two hours. But where did they compensate? He's a lot more hands. This shit now. <laughs> and that's all right because he's still Mick and he still knows how to prance it when he's walking up and down that runway. So that was great. The musicianship still there, uh, getting a little bit older. And uh, in that way, um, poor Keith, my hero Keith, my boy Keith is, is a little bit slower in the hands now. He's a little bit more gnarled and arthritic. And I think that's affecting his play a bit. If I'm not mistaken, I think that he had admitted to that a bit. So on this tour now, he's taking a bit of a back step. And Ronnie is taking a lot more of the solo play. And so we lose a little bit there. You know, we lose a step there. But otherwise, they still turn fire when they are guitar weaving, let me tell you. And when they hit those beats that we all know uh, and they keep it rolling, like, uh, you know, when they keep on rolling and they hit those of you who know how they do in concert and then they hit those, you know, strides and they string that out. That's something else. Mick used to string that out for a long time live. Now, not so much. So he did come back to that. That's, of course, um, how he is surviving this tour and doing it at the age he is and still delivering a stadium quality show of which the Stones practically invented and helped craft as an art anyway, you know. And here they are still impressing on that stadium-sized stage that um, that we expect. Uh, and, and he, you know, they're still fulfilling it. Part of it is the big giant screens and beautiful uh, uh, video screens behind them, super clear. Super big, different things happening in the center stage, and then two huge uh, side ones to give us the guitars and close ups of Mick. So that was great. Uh, visually, you know, I didn't miss a step, um, but it, we weren't too far away. So Mick didn't quite look like a tiny ant, he looked like maybe like a wasp. <laughs> um, he looked like a king bee. Um, so it was great. The sound, uh, it, sometimes, you know, it was weird when uh, this didn't happen Wednesday. I didn't pick up on it. But the Saturday night show, occasionally Daryl Jones's bass in the mix was like way too low. I mean, sometimes, you know, you want the bottom way down there. But uh, it was like way too low and where it was kind of killing the guitars. And that wasn't the song or the place, you know, to kill the guitars. And so uh, he, they did that on two songs. They did that Saturday on Angry. As a matter of fact, I'm going to rewatch the um, concert so that I could uh, see how that theory played out. Another very interesting thing I learned, maybe some of you guys know because you're longtime Stones fans and go much deeper than me, but I noticed in the close-ups of uh, old songs like um, Jump Jack Flash, um, Keith's guitar that he uses to play those, you know, I had commented it so you could see it big on the on the screen, right? And I, I told my buddy, I said, um, man, that guitar has seen some miles. You could look at it and you could see. And I was like, wow, I wonder if that's the original guitar that Keith like even wrote the song on and has been playing that song on since the 70s. You know, I wondered that and I saw how I know it had like all these miles on it, right? Because it had like these scratches on it that I saw in the wood, like in the wood grain. And then as I watched him playing, I saw how he does this often. That's where he's scratching. Maybe like his guitar pick is going like this. And over 30 years on that guitar, he's got these scratch marks that I picked up on. 
super intricate stones, Keith trivia that only I would be interested in. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else can I tell you? The band was great. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, Ronnie picks up more of the solos. Now, here's something that I got to pick up on if I watch that full show video when I watch it. Uh, my buddy Hindenburg that I went with on Saturday, uh, he mentioned that he said he caught on the big screen that Ronnie Wood hurt his finger or hurt his hand. He saw him like on a draw and, ah, and wince in pain. So uh, that was, I think, the last song of the night, the last song of the encores. And um, what was that? Satisfaction, I think. And uh, he said, yeah, he saw that he hurt his hand. But I tell you what, Ronnie played out that whole song and we didn't know it. And if you didn't catch it, you didn't know it. But I'm going to watch that video and, and see if I can pick up on it myself. Otherwise, great. In it, so far, the personnel are great. They, took, they take good care of you. They're very polite. And they want you to have a good time. You know, and so that I appreciate the staff at SoFi. It was cool. Last couple of bits. Wednesday night. We met and party with a dude from Switzerland who was here from Switzerland to see the Stones show. And then uh, Saturday night, I met up with a friend, a Twitter friend. Does it happen in real life? Do you meet Twitter friends? Yes, you do sometimes. And I met one who uh, we are fellow Super Stones fans and fellow Super Social Distortion fans. And so we linked on that. And we've been uh, internet uh, Twitter friends um for a bit and he was coming to see the show and so we got together and we met on saturday and we partied pre-stone show because he was the guy down in the pit giving me the pit info and um we met up i don't know how you find somebody after a rolling stone show of you know sixty thousand people and he and he found us after the show in the parking lot walking back <laughs> so there you go we and we hung out with him with him uh, for like another, I don't know, a couple of hours because you got to wait for traffic to go down after SoFi. If there's any gripe, it's the traffic. But that's the story of LA, ain't it? And so there's my story of the Stones. And I didn't even tell you half, but I know I'm already rambling, right? <laughs> but there, there was that many great stories to tell of a great night. Stones, to wrap it all up like I began it, I didn't know what to expect. Let me tell you, they blew me away. They blew me out of the water, and they're going to be up rock and rolling in San Francisco. They'll show you. You'll see, San Fran, that the Rolling Stones are still the greatest rock and roll band in the world. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.